The Trojan War, one of the most famous ancient Greek myths. Many of you will have already heard of the 10-year conflict between the fortified Trojan city and the united Greek armies, the latter of whom eventually win by sneaking into Troy disguised in a massive wooden horse. But how did the war actually start? The story starts with the king and queen of Troy, Priam and Hecuba, who were expecting a son. A great moment for any couple, right? Well, in this case, not so much. The child is prophesied to bring about the total destruction of Troy. Because of this total destruction of Troy thing, the king and queen command a servant to kill their newborn, who leaves the baby on a mountainside to die. A few days later, the servant returns to find the baby alive and well, and so impressed by this, decides to raise him as his own. The child is named Paris, and grows up to be so fair in his judgement that even the gods respect him. Eventually, he is reunited with his royal family, who welcome him with open arms, seeming to have forgotten that whole prophesied to bring about the total destruction of their city thing. Meanwhile, a sea nymph named Thetis and a mortal man named Peleus are getting married. The king of the gods, Zeus, hosts their wedding banquet and invites all manner of gods and mythical creatures to the nuptials. That is, except for Eris, goddess of discord. Eris is, let's say, disappointed by not making the guest list, and in protest, not only crashes the wedding, but brings a gift that definitely wasn't on the registry. A carved golden apple bearing the words, for the most beautiful. Eris yeah. throws the apple into the wedding party and things get ugly. Hera, queen of the gods, Athena, goddess of war and wisdom, and Aphrodite, goddess of love, all claim that the apple is intended for them. Unable to decide who the apple should be given to, the goddesses turn to Zeus to pass judgment. But Zeus isn't too keen on judging a beauty contest between his wife and two daughters, and so passes the responsibility onto a mortal famed for his judgment. And so Paris is approached by the three goddesses. Each goddess offers Paris a reward if he chooses them. Hera offers control over Europe and Asia. Athena offers wisdom and to make Paris the world's greatest warrior. And Aphrodite? Well, Aphrodite offers Paris the most beautiful woman in the world. Can you guess who he picks? He picks Aphrodite, the goddess who can give him the hottest girlfriend, and in so doing makes the goddess of love a permanent ally of the Trojans, and Athena and Hera their enemies. Unfortunately, Paris's prize of the most beautiful woman in the world is Queen Helen of Sparta, who already has a husband, Menelaus, king of Sparta. But this doesn't seem to faze Paris. With Aphrodite's blessing, he heads to Sparta, and while Helen's husband Menelaus is away, he takes her back to Troy. It's very unclear how she feels about this at this point. When Menelaus returns, he is understandably confused and very annoyed that his what wife is missing, and with another man. In response, Menelaus calls on all the kings of Greece to assemble their armies and sail to Troy to claim Helen back. To find out what happens next in the story, maybe check out the British Museum's latest exhibition, All About Troy. Details are on your screen now.